Hi everyone, today I'm reviewing The Visit, written and directed by M. Night Shyamalan. So The Visit tells the story of two children in their early to mid-teens who go to spend a week with their estranged maternal grandparents, where they stumble upon several disturbing revelations. Produced on a budget of $5 million, this is M. Night Shyamalan's lowest budget film to date, and it seems fitting that he decided to make a horror film as the horror genre tends to thrive on lower budgets. But let's get right to the good. So the most notable stylistic decision about this film was that it was done in a hybrid found footage film within a film documentary style. The way it was done was refreshing and easier to take seriously than a film like Paranormal Activity, in large part due to the talented young leads, who are both very likable and charismatic. I think that one of Shyamalan's strengths as a director is working with young actors, and we get a very convincing brother and sister team to guide us through this nightmarish situation. Both actors, Ed Oxenbold and Olivia Tejong, were perfectly cast and even looked like convincing siblings. The film excels at dark humor and suspense, and the script did a decent job keeping us engaged despite the budgetary limitations. Nana and Pop Pop, played by Peter McRobbie and Deanna Dunnigan, were both sufficiently creepy and you couldn't help but wonder how far the film would take the characters. I came out of this film having felt very engaged, but reflecting on it now, uh, there's not as much good to say about it as I thought. I guess the euphoria wore off really quickly. So I'll get right to the bad. As I mentioned, this film was shot in a pseudo-documentary found footage style, and often when filmmakers shoot this way, there tend to be glaring inconsistencies that can be distracting to the attentive viewer. There were some very odd stylistic choices that didn't match up with the perspective we were given. When the film began, in an attempt to orient myself, I decided that what I was watching wasn't a film within a film, but rather raw footage that hadn't been edited yet. For the most part, this held true, but at around the middle of the film, there were a few crossfades which seemed really out of place, and production-wise, the movie was way too slick for what it was trying to be. The dark shots were crisp and showed none of the noise you would normally get if you were shooting with a camcorder or DSLR at a high ISO. All the interior scenes and even the night scenes were all very well lit, and the audio was always recorded perfectly. The tone of the film was also very uneven. This movie had been advertised as a horror film, but there's a great deal of sentimentality thrown in to sort of flesh out the characters and the story. Unfortunately, I don't think this worked in the end because the film was too small to take on the sentimental story arc and it ran in stark contrast with the main plot. I think with a horror film, it's better to favor the situation over the characters. At its root, modern horror is an exploitation genre and it works best when it stays focused on the mystery that the characters are trying to solve. Anything apart from the mystery is distracting for the viewer and ends up taking us out of the suspense. There's also a very strange thing at the end where the filmmaker sort of directly addresses the audience, which I just found really tacky. So now let's get to the ugly. The visit tends to play on the fears that young people have about the elderly and aging. This is where most of the scares originate, but at times I found it more sad than scary. I can be scared of something that's mysterious and completely out of my realm of understanding, but the fact that you essentially have elderly people dealing with age-related problems sort of makes me feel more sympathetic towards those characters. M. Night Shyamalan is a very competent filmmaker, and going from a huge budget film like After Earth to a shoestring budget film like The Visit you can definitely see he's stronger in this realm. Unfortunately, his strength as a visual director is severely limited by the first-person perspective of the film, so we don't really get a glimpse of his artistic style. In the end, I would give this film a zero. There are certainly things to like about it, but as a horror film, it doesn't really deliver on scares, and it has an uneven narrative that, although intriguing, doesn't quite deliver in a satisfactory way. I hope you liked this review. If you liked it, give a thumbs up. If you didn't like it, give a thumbs down. Uh, please remember to subscribe, watch my other reviews, and I'll see you next time.